Hello, this is Steve, Dichroic Glassman. Well, I'm going to talk about bevels and jewels, dichroic ones, as a matter of fact. Well, I can't tell you how many years ago I started making dichroic bevels and jewels, around 13 years ago, 12, 13 years ago. And I've been selling my program to the public for about four years now, um, maybe even a month or two longer, I don't know, somewhere in that vicinity. So it's time to um, talk about a new way of seeing dichroic bevels and jewels that I've never really talked about before. And I don't think the industry is really r realizes uh, this aspect of dichroic glass. For the most part, dichroic glass, no matter what substrate it's on, whether it's on boro as this one is, or System 96 or otherwise, dichroic is a coating. It's not the glass itself. But all dichroic has two properties. This is yellow, the color you see through. When it's being reflected, it's a blue or a violet or a yellow, blue, purple, whatever. <laughs> like I'm colorblind, I can tell you that. But yellow is perhaps one of the most dramatic different Dichroic has two properties. One of them it at, looks like a mirror. What you're seeing right now, reflecting blue, is light bouncing off of and running away. That's called reflective. Light is bouncing on the surface, much like a mirror, and bouncing off. Transmitted color, all I have to do is turn this piece of dichro to where you're seeing now yellow. All I did is change the angle. That's the nature of dichro, is it's ever-changing colors. So now, that piece of blue glass <laughs> is very yellow. A degree of yellow, as a matter of fact. A measurable degree with an R number of 312. A Roscoe number. Look at it's doing to the jewels in the background. Very pretty, but very limited. You have a shift color. These are called shifts of in between, of peach and cream and yada yada. All you gifted color people can tell what that is. Flesh, all these other. These are called axis or shift colors. When you go from the blue to the yellow, the colors in between are axis or shift. Now let's bring that into view, what that has to do with how I open this up. I'm on a black board foam core board. Let's see if I can reverse this out to get smaller. I'm on a foam core board. Maybe I better back it up a, a bit. And I've got two groupings of bevels here. The, uh, one's jewels and one's bevels that you're going to notice the value of why this setup. In, reflect in going back to the reflective nature, this glass is blue when it reflects. This glass is anybody's can guess. This is what I'm going to introduce as reflective quality jewels. Let me loosen up my camera. Now, what color is it? Look at all those shift colors. It's basically a pink gold magenta. And then you can see some crazy colors on an angle. In enhanced by the facetry in the glass. That's really what's making us dizzy is we're watching the facets creating dimensionality. Now these bevels that I typically make my hummingbirds out of and everything is used with a transmitted color. In other words we're relying on the color we're seeing through it is yellow. This pile over here is relying on its on light hitting the surface and bouncing off. In the dark, these are way more effective. In the light, as you're going to see in a second, these are the other. I can't even tell what these are. Their mere coats are somewhat mundane. They do not shift or change much as I rotate the camera around. Pick one. Let's see. Pick this one and this one. What are they doing any differently as I move my camera around? Can that limited effect out of these two 
Look again. The only thing that's really doing you anything is the faceting. Now watch these. There's a myriad of color enhanced by the facetry. Depending on the angles you look at these at, they're picking up all kinds of different colors. In a pile, that's amazing. And yet, all these are out of the same sheet of glass. All these are out of the same sheet of glass, including the hummingbird. The tail is always this bluish color. If you made a hummingbird out of this, it'd be brilliant. But it'd be extremely boring as you watch. Watch for the transmitted color. These vibrant bevels. Ooh, I want some. Wait till you see what they look like. How they turn a different characterization when I set the camera down and I pull the black board out so that you're going to see the difference. I'm going to start selling reflective dichroic bevel components and transmitted. Reflective is excellent for your piece in the dark time. No light coming in. How many circumstances do we have where we don't have much light? And we still want to put stained glass there, and we've got to be really careful not to omit what light we have with deep, dark colors. So in a dark environment, reflective dichro is what you want, because the others that are strictly acting on a, as a colored mirror, do, doing nothing to generate color, these become alive and vibrant once light comes through them, and not until, other than this world where it's not changing much. This world changes tremendously. When I pull this black board out from underneath the plastic, you're going to see in the transmitted light, of which this is their, their best asset, these are mundane, and, and the opposite holds true. Don't you wish that those bevels and jewels would be the same night and day? Well, that's in the physics. That's in the nature of the makeup of the glass as it's being made. These metal oxides. What is titanium's nature going to do? Manganese and all these metal oxides. What are they going to do during the night as a reflection or during the day as transmission? What are they going to do? has nothing to do with you and me and our, 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 what we do with our item. And I'm going to show you a dramatic case. Once I lift this beautiful bevel up, it turns a blue-green. How cool. Beautiful color. So, we've got two jewels down here, representations. One of this world, the reflective, and one in this world as transmitted. So, let's pull the glass off. And as I promised you, I'm going to pull this black cloth, or this black piece of paper, out from underneath and watch the voila. Here they go. Now the rainbow bevels wake up. Do they really wake up? As the outcome is even limited as well. Now, as I move my camera angle, there's still stay in that family of color. Now, look at these guys. They're all blue and green. Not as vibrant with the lights off. These get more of their color strength with the lights on. Transmitted means coming through. Reflective means hitting the surface and bouncing off in some angle of trajectory. Even with the hummingbird. As vibrant as they are. I'm getting ready to turn off the light here in a second. As vibrant as they are. Everything changes. With light or the lack thereof. These are astounding, amazing to see them in this pile under different circumstances. When I pile them on, here's our rainbow.
transmitted, here's our reflective. Look at the color range of the reflected. The rainbow's not doing much. Shifts a little. Compare the two now. If anything is turning color, it's the one on the left. Oops, there was a little bit of color shift right here. It's kind of fascinating and simple to see, and yet dramatically huge outcomes. Here's our rainbow. Pretty. Definitely pretty. Here's our other glass. The green and the blue is interesting. The emerald green, very rich color of green. But yet, move it out of the world of transmitted light. And it takes on some beautiful properties. Really, two different worlds. Reflective dichroic bevels and jewels transmitted. Kind of interesting choice now, but at least you have one. And now you know the difference, which makes a big difference. Bye-bye.